Well, praise the Lord. You already have church this morning? It's time to have a wonderful service, a wonderful Sunday morning in the house of the Lord. We come to worship Jesus and give God all the praise and glory and honor. Let's stand. Let's magnify Jesus this morning. Father, we just want to take this time to enter into your presence to give you glory and honor and praise. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for everything that you have done. We ask God that the Holy Spirit will bless this service and accomplish your will. Move in a special way. Touch our hearts and our lives. Draw us closer and closer to you as we serve you and give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, Father, draw us. sing that song, Nothing But The Blood. Thank you all for joining us online. Let's enjoy the presence of God and worship this morning as we serve God together. Page 208, Nothing But The Blood.
worship God this morning. We've come to magnify Jesus. We come to praise the Lord in the house of the Lord this morning. We gather to give you glory and honor and praise and thanksgiving. Jesus, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Glory and honor and praise be to you forever and ever, O oh God. For you are great. You're so wonderful, God. You're so holy. You're so mighty, Jesus. We bless and praise you this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love and your peace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and praise him this morning. God is so good. The love of God is so wonderful. The love of God is so great and so reassuring this morning to know that Jesus cares, to know that Jesus understands, to know that Jesus is with us this morning. The presence and the reality of God is here with us. Jesus, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship and bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray.
us as we come together as believers, worshiping you and praising you, God. Have your way this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. What a blessing. What a blessing to know the reality of God, to have a relationship with the living God. Yeah? Amen. To have a relationship with God and to know that God hear and answer prayers, as the Bible said, unto thee that heareth prayer, he said, shall all flesh come. Thank God this morning that we serve a real God, not a religion, not a, we don't worship a statue, we're worshiping the real and the living God, the, the God that came and died on the cross and rose again from the dead. Amen? Amen. That's power right there. You don't think that's power? I challenge you to go to the cemetery and raise somebody from the dead. <laughs> if you can't, then you need to let Jesus be God. Amen? <laughs> well, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. We're thankful for each and every one that's here. And you that are joining us online, I hate to say watching because it's not a show. <laughs> we want you to join. Amen? We want you to get in and, and worship God and, and let God touch your heart. Maybe you have a need this morning. I don't know. Um, but just reach out to God. God. God can hear you. God can hear your prayers and he can... And he can help you. Or maybe you just want to give God thanks for all that he's done. Just join us and be a part of what God is doing. Amen? And this time we received a Sunday morning tithe and offering. Um, Marvin, would you help us this morning? And all Christians do pay their tithe and give the offerings unto the Lord. And if you want to give online, there is a link. Feel free to do so. And we would like you also, if you're watching online, to just share it. Spread the word, just share it. As somebody else can hear the message that Jesus Christ is... God. Amen. 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 Would you please pray, sir? Father, thank you for this opportunity to give a God's program. Father, bless the giver according to his giving. In Christ's name, amen. 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 And thank you all for your giving.
Well, we jamming this morning, aren't we? <laughs> what a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. It's like the guy, he walked into the office and he was hearing this, this sound, this music. He didn't know where it was coming from. And then he realized it was the printer. It was jamming. <laughs> Can't get y'all to laugh for nothing. It's gonna be one. <laughs> I like them silly jokes. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> That's life. You gotta learn to laugh a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get get a get a two plus just gums going like that. <laughs> Are we all zoomed in, ready to go? All right. <laughs> Guy said, if the Bible said laughter is a good medicine, right? Yeah. Laughter is a good medicine. So you feel free to overdose. You know, you don't have to worry about it. You'll be fine. Amen? Let's go ahead and laugh, enjoy it. Enjoy the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to read to you this morning. Oh, before I read, um, read you, it was on there. I don't know if we can pull it up. It's on a deal. But we're going to have a fellowship, a Christmas fellowship. Not this Sunday coming, but next Sunday. After church, Sunday morning after church. So it'll be December 20th, and hopefully there won't be all that snow on the ground, because if it do, <laughs> it probably won't work. <laughs> December 20th, fellowship after church, and we'll talk about it. We'll make some pamphlets, whatever. Just want to throw it out, give us a couple of weeks, okay? Y'all like fellowship, right? Oh, well, let's preach. <laughs> I want to read to you this morning from... The book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Hebrews, chapter 10. And this is like a share in the Bible study. We're teaching the book of Hebrews right now. This is really one of my favorite books in the Bible. I like them, all the books, but this one, there's so, so much in this book. And even in the Bible study, we're really barely touching it because we, we don't want to dwell forever on one verse. We can, you know, but we just give an overview of it. But it's really a wonderful book. If you never read it, read it. Yeah? Read it. Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 37 through 39. He said, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And I want to use verse 39 as our text. He said, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And using the last part of that verse as a text this morning, I want to preach with the help of the Lord on a message entitled, To the Saving of the Soul. To the Saving of the Soul. Well, let's look to the Lord in prayer this morning. Jimmy, would you please pray for the message and the messenger this morning? Father, we thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning to line, line us to be here. We thank you for everything you do for us. And Father, right now, I pray that the future pastor, the message that we need to be Bless him as he brings to your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. And thank you all for being here. And once again, thank you for joining us online. I want to preach about to the saving of the soul. You see, and, and, and the, the, I give you the gist of the message, which we'll get to eventually. You see, a lot of people in our country and around the world today, they claim that they believe God. But not too many people believe to the saving of the soul. And what I mean by that is not too many people believe God enough to do whatever it takes to make it to heaven. And so keep that in mind. That will be along the line of what I'm preaching about this morning and it may come out towards the end of the message, but I want you to miss what I'm talking about. You know, it's okay to believe, but if you don't believe enough to do whatever it takes, then really your belief will not get anything done for you. Amen? We have to believe enough to do whatever it takes to make it to heaven. So, let's start. <laughs> it's bad when you throw the message in the beginning. I didn't plan to do that, but oh well. <laughs> but in our Bible reading, the writer under the anointing of the Holy Ghost address three major things that pertain to Christianity. The first thing he talked about is the return 
of Jesus Christ. Now we know from the scripture that Jesus came the first time to earth as a man to die for the sins of mankind. And from the scriptures also we learn that after he was crucified on the cross and he was laid in the tomb after three days, the Bible tells us that he rose again from the dead and he was seen by many of his, many of his disciples. All the apostles saw him except Judas. Judas already uh, killed himself, but the other apostles saw him and then many other brethren, over 500 people, witnessed the resurrection of Christ. And the Bible said after he rose from the dead, he gave instructions unto the disciples to continue in the faith and to spread the gospel to all of humanity, as the Bible tells us to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, right? That's our commission, to let people know the, about the gospel of Christ, that Jesus can save them from their sins. Amen? That Jesus can bring hope to their life. Jesus can turn things around in their life, and He can bring peace and joy and fulfillment, and above all else, that He can take them to heaven after they die. Amen? Amen. And so he, was, he told them all that because he wanted to give them a chance to be saved from their sins and to enter into heaven and to escape eternal judgment in the lake of fire. The scripture also teaches us that Jesus will return to this earth a second time. But first, the Bible tells us in different books, in Colossians, or I mean in, in Thessalonians and also in Corinthians, he said he will first come, to the cloud, come back to the clouds and he will rapture the church out of this world and take them to heaven. And then he will turn to the Jewish people after the rapture of the church. He will turn to the Jewish people, the ones that rejected him the first time when he came, and he will give them a second chance to receive him as their Messiah. This, the scripture tells us, will last for a space of seven years, within which time the Bible teaches us that the Antichrist will rise to power and there will be great persecution of the people of God. He also teaches us that within the seven year period, as we know at the tribulation period, that there will be many plagues and judgments upon mankind, will pour out upon mankind. And at the end of the seven years, the Bible teaches us that Jesus will come to this earth and destroy the armies of the Antichrist, the Antichrist and the false prophet, and he will set up his kingdom upon the earth. And so that's what he was telling us there in verse 7. He said, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. When Jesus come back, he's not going to play wrong. Amen? Amen. We either be, they either be ready or they're not. The first time when he come for the rapture, it's either we ready or we are not. So we have to be ready at all times. Amen? And so he's exhorting us as believers to keep our hearts and our minds right before God. Be prepared because when the Lord comes, first in the rapture, take the church out. And then at the end, what, when, both times when he comes, he said, he will not tarry. In other words, he's not going to say, well... You got 10 minutes to make it right. Yeah. Amen. Or you got five minutes to make all those things right in your heart. All those bitterness that you hold on to. Or all those things that you still have and relinquish and got rid of. There will be no time for that. You need to be right when the Lord comes. Amen. Yeah. And so that's what verse 37 deals with. The second thing is, he deals with is that Christians must live by faith. Amen. Christians must live by faith, knowing that Jesus is coming again. The Word of God admonishes us, that admonishes us to remain in the faith. In other words, don't quit. Don't give up. Amen. Don't stop believing. Amen? Amen? If we draw back or quit, the Scripture says God will have no pleasure in us. Verse 38, he said, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And so we know what God meant by that. We shared last, last Sunday morning uh, in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. He said, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord, the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live, Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, 
For why will ye die, O house of Israel? So he's letting us know what he meant by having no pleasure in those that draw back. So God's exhortation, the second thing that he, he admonishes us or exhorts us is continue in the faith. Keep believing God. Keep living this life of faith. Don't let the enemy put quit or don't let him put doubt in your mind to where you draw back and not be what God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. So that was verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. First thing, Jesus is coming again. Second thing, we got to live by faith. The third thing is, what we're going to deal with this morning is in verse 39. Uh, he speaks about the faith of a true Christian, a true believer of God. This speaks of a different kind of faith. It speaks of a faith that leads to action. As he said there, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So the message I'm preaching to you this morning, the title is, To the Saving of the Soul. God is looking this morning for people that believe to the saving of the soul. God is looking for a group of people that will say, God, I have this kind of faith in you to where I believe you. I believe the Bible. I believe the things that are commanded in the scripture. And because I believe it, I will live it. Amen. And so that's what we're talking about this morning. So many people make their profession that they believe God, but they refuse to follow through, follow through with actions. Amen. They make all this profession, you know, oh, I love the Lord. You see them all the time. Oh, I love the Lord. I believe in God. I'm going to church Sunday morning. I'm going to get me some Jesus. I'm going to worship God. And then they still live in sin. They don't believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. You can't come to the house of God and testify before the saints saying, I believe God and I love God with all my heart and still live in fornication or still live in adultery or still cursing and swearing and still living in all manner of drunk and wickedness. You can't do that. Amen. And so the reason why they do that is because they do not believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. They do not believe to the saving of the soul. Their faith is only by words. As Jesus said, this people draw it nigh to me with their mouth. He said, but their heart is far from me. You're not going to make it into heaven with that kind of faith. Yeah. Amen. You have to believe enough to put some action to your faith. Amen? It speaks of a different kind of faith, a faith that leads to action. Like I said, many people profess that they believe God, but they refuse to follow through with action. People profess that they believe God, and they profess that they believe the Bible, yet they spend most of their time criticizing the Bible instead of obeying it. Amen? Amen? They spend most of their time debating and looking for loopholes in the Word of God instead of accepting the Word of God as they say, I believe God. Amen? It's one thing to profess. It's another thing to live it. Amen? It's one thing to say, I'm a Christian. It's another thing to get up and say, you know what? I will mortify the flesh. I will put to death sin and anything that is not pleasing to God. It's one thing to say, I believe God. It is another thing to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus every day. Those are the ones that, that believe to the saving of the soul are those people that are willing to do whatever it takes to make it in. Amen? Amen. So that's the message I'm preaching about this morning. Y'all excited about God? Amen. Amen. Come on, shout at me. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's because there's so many people that talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. Amen? Amen. And no wonder why Jesus said many are called, but few are chosen. No wonder why he said that in that day many shall come to me and profess, saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out demons and done all these miracles in thy name and all these wonderful works? And then Jesus said he will look right at them and said, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. It is because they did not believe enough to the saving of the soul. Yes, they, they believe in God and they go to church and they, they acknowledge Christ and everything, but they did not believe enough to turn away from their ungodliness. Amen? And so the message is, believe to the saving of the soul. If you're going to believe God, believe Him the right way. Amen? If you're going to serve God, serve Him the right way. If you're going to be a Christian, be a genuine Christian. If you're going to 
be a child of God, be one that lines up with the Bible. Amen? Let the Bible be that which dictates your action and not your own opinion and your own ways. Amen? Amen. And I know you are already. I'm just preaching what God plays on my heart. Amen? Amen. If you hit a string, praise the Lord. If it doesn't, shout anyways. Amen? <laughs> well, we're talking about faith that leads to action. Faith that doesn't lead to action is not true faith. Amen? Faith that does not lead to action is not true faith. Let's look at some of the, the, the scripture. We're in Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to Hebrews chapter 11 for a little bit. And read a few verses and talk and show you how when people really believe God... They will act like they do. Amen? They will act like they do. In verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm just going to read a few. You can read the whole chapter 11. You'll see. If you read Hebrews chapter 11, everything in there speaks of people who serve God by faith, and their faith was followed by action. Amen? Amen. And so, that's the whole point. I'm just going to pick and choose a few of them. Verse 4, he said, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith he obtained witness, witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Showing us that Abel, the first man, or Abel and Cain and Abel, the first two boys that were born into this world, the children of Adam, he said they both believed God. Cain believed God, and so did Abel. And God had set up a way of worship that they should bring an animal sacrifice. And they offered that animal sacrifice and the blood of that sacrifice will be used as a cleansing for their sins. And Cain knew that. He did it for many years. But it got to a place in his life where he thought, you know what, I can do things my own way. I can do things my own way. And so he came to God and offered him a vegetable sacrifice he brought up the fruits of his garden amen he brought some 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 tomatoes or whatever they had back then i don't know but he brought something he said he believed god but he didn't believe him to the saving of the soul because he think he can serve god his own way and still be accepted but it didn't work that way amen and god showed us from the very beginning if you really believe god you will do it God's way. Amen? Amen. And so Abel believed the Lord and genuinely believed God and he did it God's way and God accepted Abel's sacrifice but the Bible said he rejected Cain. Amen? And so it shows us that if we genuinely have faith in God and we believe to the saving of the soul we will take action to do things the right way. Amen? Amen. And we can preach a whole message on that but we won't. <laughs> Hebrews 11 8 verse 8 he said, or verse 7, I'm sorry, Hebrews 11, 7. Not 7, 11. <laughs> I could be naughty and make a joke, but that might, not, that might be offensive. But <laughs> we don't know who's watching. <laughs> but um, Hebrews eleven seven. He said, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Prepare an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of the righteousness which is by faith. Showing us, I'm talking about belief to the saving of the soul. Noah believed God. Amen. Noah believed God to the saving of his soul and was willing to go out there and build that ark. Amen. He was willing to do something. God told him, God told him, Noah, I'm going to bring a flood upon this earth and destroy it. If you really believe me, he said, go out there and get the wood and build this ark. Put some work in. And it took him a long time. I think it was 64 plus years, whatever it took him to build this ark. But the Bible said he believed the Lord and he did it. Amen. Amen. That's what faith does. People that truly believe to the saving of the soul will do whatever God tells them to do. Amen? Even when it doesn't make sense. Amen. God, it never rained. Build the ark. He built it. Amen? Amen. Like I so said, I'm just going to touch on these and go Hebrews 11, 17. Or first, Hebrews 11, 8. I'm sorry. I'm messing myself up. And hopefully I'm not messing him up. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 8. He said, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed 
And he went out not knowing whither he went. God told him, get up and go. And he went. Amen. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't know anybody in that land. God said, leave all your family, leave everything behind, just go into the land of Canaan. And the Bible said, Abraham obeyed. Amen. That's what I'm talking about, faith that leads to action. In verse 17, another, another verse about Abraham, he said, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. God told him, said, Abraham, you've been waiting for this son for, for a long time now, 35 years or whatever, you know, however long he waited for that son. And now I want you to take him and take him up to Mount Moriah and offer him a sacrifice. And the Bible said, Abraham didn't even argue with God. Amen. He didn't even fuss and say, well, God, this is my son. I love him. I care about him. Why should I take him and offer him a, a sacrifice? The Bible said he obeyed God. Amen. Amen. He believed Amen. the Lord. He believed God. God asked him to do something that drastic. And he said, God, whatever you want me to do. That's the kind of people that believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. Amen. Whatever God tells you to do, do it. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it may not be a commandment in the scripture, but God may point his finger at your life and say, do something. Amen? He may point his finger at your life and say, do something to test your obedience. Let me tell you, it's better to obey. Amen? Yeah. It's better to obey because God, God always have a bigger blessing waiting. One more in Hebrews, and I continue the message. You said, preacher, isn't this the message? Yeah, it is a message. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 24 and 25. He said, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. All these scriptures, and like I said, you can read throughout the Bible. You can read the whole chapter, of, uh, chapter 11 of the book of Hebrews. It all shows us one thing, one common theme. When people genuinely believe God, they will do what God tells them to do. Amen? Amen? When people genuinely believe God, it will move them to action. So get into the gist of the message this morning. I'm talking about the saving of the soul. Our faith in God has to move us to action. In other words, if we believe God, then we will do everything the Bible teaches us because the salvation of our soul depends upon it. Amen? Amen? And so that's what he's talking about. He said, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. He said, but we are of them who believe to the saving of the soul. Thank God this morning there are people like that this morning here in this church and in other churches and throughout the world. People that genuinely believe God to where they will say, Lord, no matter what you want me to do, I will do it. Amen? I will not fight against the scripture. I will not kick against your word. I will not resist the Holy Ghost when He deals with me. But when I hear that still small voice speaking to my heart, I will say, yes, Lord, whatsoever you want me to do, I will do it. Amen? Amen. So I'm talking about that this morning. To the saving of the soul, we believe to the saving of the soul, which means that we will do what God tells us to do this morning. Amen? Amen. The first thing he said in verse 39, he said, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. The first thing in this verse of scripture I want to look at in verse 39 is that this kind of faith will keep us from going back to sin. Amen? This kind of faith will keep us from going back to sin. He said, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Now, perdition means, it speaks of hell. Or it means, it speaks of eternal destruction or damnation, perdition. He said, before we got saved, that's where we were headed. Amen? Amen. Before we got saved, we were already, in a sense, we were already citizens of hell before we became a Christian. 
we're already heading to destruction. We're already heading to eternal condemnation. We're already heading to the lake of fire. And so we, we got open our eyes through the message of the gospel that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And that if we come to him and confess our sins, he will save us. And so we did that and we received salvation. And we received forgiveness of sin and cleansing from all our transgression. And God sets us on the right path in the right direction heading to heaven. Amen. Amen. And he said, now, if we really believe to the saving of the soul, he said, we will not turn back and head in that direction. Amen. He said, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. We don't want to go back to the ways of destruction. We don't want to go back to the ways of sin. We don't want to go back to the ways of ungodliness and unrighteousness because we know what the end result will be. Amen. We know what, where that will lead us. If we go back to perdition, to the ways of of unrighteousness we know that when we die we will suffer in the lake of fire as Paul said if I build again the things which I destroy if I build again the things which I destroyed he said I make myself a transgressor showing us the severity of going back to the ways of unrighteousness in other words what he's saying to us that before we got saved we were transgressors by default we came into this world as sinners we came into the, in this world with a sinful nature, but God saved us, right? Yeah. God changed us. He said, if we go back to that lifestyle, he said, we have make, or we have made ourselves a transgressor. Amen? It's a much, much sore punishment waiting for those who go back to that kind of lifestyle because we know better. Amen? We have been enlightened. Read Hebrews chapter 6. We have been enlightened. He said it's almost impossible to renew those who were once enlightened and they have tasted of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He said it's almost impossible to renew them to repentance, seeing that they have crucified the Son of God afresh and hang Him to an open shame. And so I don't even know why I'm sharing all that because that wasn't part of the message, but whatever it is, Take it, amen? We are not of them who draw back to that kind of lifestyle, amen? amen. amen. Woo, I'm on fire this morning for, for my own soul. <laughs> I'm excited about God, amen? I'm excited about my God. God really confirmed this message yesterday. As my in -law, She was over there when I was preparing on the couch. <laughs> amen, God, bless in my heart. I pray in the spirit of God bearing witness. So God knows what he wants this morning. It may be for one of us. It may be for all of us. It may be for whoever. It doesn't matter. God just... Give it to me to preach it. Amen? Amen. It means that we are not them who draw back unto perdition. We know that sin leads to destruction. As stated in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank God for eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank God for pardon of sin. Thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for all that the Lord has done in our life. But he said the wages or the payment of sin is death, which means eternal separation from God. So people that know the truth of the Bible and genuinely believe God will walk away from a lifestyle of sin. You find someone to say, I'm a Christian and they still want to live in sin. Then that person doesn't really believe to the saving of the soul. Amen. You find a person that say, I want to follow Jesus, but I want to follow the world at the same time. Then that person does not really believe to the saving of the soul. You find a person, I'm not talking about we struggle. I understand we all have struggles and God will help us. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when their desire is to do it. It's a different story, amen? It's a different story be 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 between someone struggling to overcome something and they're trying to overcome it and someone who just makes excuses why they should do it, amen? Mm -hmm. so that's a big difference, amen? Yeah. And so you find someone that, that, that just makes excuses to why they, they can't do this and they can't do it and they have to do this and they have to do that is a person that does not believe to the saving of the soul. That's the message I'm preaching about, right? To the saving of the soul. They will make, they will not, someone who believes to the saving of the soul will not make excuse for sin. They will not justify it. They will call it as it is. Sin is transgressing the divine law of God. Because of their true faith in God, they will not allow themselves to be drawn in the wrong direction. This faith will put the salvation of their soul as the most important thing. Amen. 
this if the if your if your soul if if you're if you making it to heaven is not the most important thing then you do not believe to the saving of the soul amen, amen. if heaven is not the most important thing to you then you do not believe to the saving of the soul amen? amen i'm talking about to the saving of the soul it will keep you from going back to the ways of destruction that was the first thing in verse verse 39 of our bible reading but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition the second thing is he said but of them that believe to the saving of the soul in other words if you have that true genuine faith the, to, the believing of the soul it will lead you to take actions Amen. It will lead you to take actions to do the right things. Amen. It means that I will do whatever it takes to make it to heaven. Belief to the saving of the soul means that uh, we believe all the way to the end. That we will not quit. We will not throw in the towel. It means that uh, we will finish the race. We will not quit or fall, fall out, but we will run until we cross the finish line. Amen? It means that I will discipline myself to make the necessary changes in my life to suit the will of God for what God wants in my life. Amen? So I'm talking about the saving of the soul. As Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 said, He said, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, He said, Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. A person that genuinely believed to the saving of his soul will get rid of the weights. Amen? Those things that are hindering you from being what God wants you to be you will make effort to get rid of those things all those distractions all those things that latch on to you and keep you from being a prayer warrior for God or being faithful to the house of God or being faithful to the word of God or being faithful to a wit being a faithful witness of the gospel of God all those things that are hindering you and keeping you you know there are many of them that are keeping you from being what God wants you to be he said if you believe to the saving of your soul you will lay aside the weights amen lay aside those distractions how long do you think before the lord come back how long do you think you have before god calls you isn't it time that we lay aside the distractions isn't it time that we get rid of the weight and be that christian that god wants us to be amen yeah. am i preaching to myself this morning yeah. that's all right i need it too <laughs> He said, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. He said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Lay aside the weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. The things that surround us and keep us from being what God wants us to be. And he said, let us run with patience. Amen. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I'm talking about belief to the saving of the soul. When we believe to the saving of the soul... The only thing will be upon our, in our mind is, I got to cross that finish line. Amen? Amen. I got to cross that finish line. I shared the, the, what, this, what is, um, this NCO used to always say. I didn't understand it back then when I was a young, young soldier, young GI. He was an older man from the South. And he said, how are you doing this morning? He always said, I'm going to win this race. Amen? That was the saying, I'm going to win this race. Amen? Amen? And now that I'm a Christian, I've learned to serve the Lord. I understand what he's talking about. I'm going to win this race, amen, because I believe to the saving of the soul, amen. I'm going to cross that finish line. I'm going to hear Jesus said, well done, thou faith, good and faithful servants. Enter to the joy of the Lord. That's what it means this morning to believe to the saving of the soul is that I will make it to heaven, amen. amen. You see, a confession of faith means nothing to God if we are not willing to back it up with our faith, with our actions. A confession of faith means nothing to God if we are not willing to back it up with our action. The salvation of our soul is the deciding factor. As James tells us in James chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. Don't worry, I'm almost done. There you go, big smile on your face. Finally, the preacher says something good. I'm almost done. But remember, we're in the south. When they said they're almost done... It means it goes on for another 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm getting ready to close, y'all. I'm getting ready to close. Preach for another 20 minutes. I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. 
their conclusion of the service is longer than the meat of the service. <laughs> but James chapter 2, verse 19 and 20 said, Thou believest that there is one God? He said, Thou doest well. He said, The devils also believe. Amen? Satan believed there is a God, but he's not serving him. He don't believe to the saving of his soul. Amen? <laughs> he said, Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. He said, The devils also believe and tremble. He said, I like this. He asked it in the form of a question, verse 20. He said, But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Don't you know that? Amen? Don't you know that you can say all you want, I believe, but if you don't put any action to your faith, it doesn't mean anything to God? Amen? And that's what he's saying to us here. I'm talking about believe to the saving of the soul. If we believe to the saving of the soul, our actions will follow. We will do whatever it takes. We will obey the scripture. You can come to this minute. I'll wrap it up in just a little bit. You see, if we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will by our actions follow through and do whatever God requires of us. If we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will not fight against the commandments of God. Amen. We will not fight against the commandments of God. If we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will not resist the conviction of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost still speaks, amen? amen. He still speaks. Amen. And so we believe to the saving of the soul, we will not resist that still small voice that points right to us and said, you know what you need to do, amen? amen. If we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will not kick against the will of God. Amen? This is genuine Christianity right now. This is not that fake thing that they give you in the world. This is the nitty gritty of Christianity. Amen? If you really believe to the saving of the soul, then, with, and then we will, from a humble heart, submit ourselves to God and ask the question that Paul asked on the road to Damascus. What will you have me to do, Lord? Amen? That's people that really believe God. God, what do you want me to do? If we believe to the saving of the soul, then this song will become a reality to us. Above else, I must be saved. Amen? If we believe to the saving of the soul, people who believe to the saving of the soul are those who are willing, first of all, to give their life to Jesus. How many people profess that they believe that Jesus came to this earth and died on the cross for their sins and rose again, but they refuse to surrender their life to Him? It is because they do not believe to the saving of the soul. Their belief is just words. Amen? Amen. Just words. All they give God is lip service, no actions. <clears throat> Amen? If we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will get on board with the program of God and we'll do our part to reach the souls of men and women. We will make the sacrifices that are necessary. Amen. We will not look at our life as our own, but we will say, God, everything that I have belongs to you. Therefore, I will use it to the glory of God. Amen. If we believe to the servant of the soul, then we will make commitments and we will follow through with it. And we will not let the devil stop us from being what God wants us to be. If we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will embrace the righteousness of God, which is the righteousness of faith, that our righteousness comes from God by believing and trusting in the Lord. And we will also believe, we will also embrace the righteous standard or the righteous ways of God. Let me read that again, at least I messed it up. If we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will embrace the righteousness of God, and we will also embrace the righteous ways of God. The righteousness of God speaks of the righteousness by, righteousness by faith. And the righteous ways of God speaks of our obedience to the commandments of God. Amen? You all ready? This is the very last thing I'm going to share. From the paper, that is. <laughs> if we believe to the saving of the soul, then we will do whatever it takes to make it to heaven. Amen? We will give up whatever God wants us to give up. We will relinquish anything God wants us to get rid of. We will part with anything God wants us to part with. We will cut all ties and anything that will keep us out of the kingdom of God. 
we will say, God, I believe. He said, I'm going to read it one more time. I should begin to start playing. He said, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. But we are of them who believe to the saving of the soul. I'm preaching about to the saving of the soul. You see, if we really believe to the saving of the soul, then we will live like we do. Amen? Our actions will follow. And so this morning, for all of us here and those that join us online, this is a time of prayer. If you haven't been living like the way you've been saying you believe, then this is a time to make the adjustments. This is a time to come. The altar is open as you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord. Let us do it God's way this morning. Let's all find a place to pray. Let's come to Jesus and receive God in the reality of our life. Father, thank you for the service. Thank you for each and every one this year, the house of the Lord. Draw us closer to you. Father, let the word of God penetrate into the hearts and find a place that it will grow and take root. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all find a place to pray this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. Amen.